We're at the Ropey Stand. We are at Greenville 2013 in Philadelphia. I'm with Jeremy Whipple from Ropey. Jeremy, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I think you're the tallest guy in this whole building. <laughs> uh, I'll take that as a compliment. There we go. How's this show? It seems it's awfully hard to judge a show like this. And I guess from a floor covering stand, it's unlike any other show that probably you attend, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you know, the, the wide range of products that are here um, makes it to where there's a lot of people here that aren't looking specifically for maybe flooring. Um, but that's good and bad. There's some people here that are looking for a wide range of things, and maybe flooring is a small part. Maybe they would normally not go to a flooring-specific spe show. And we get to see some people we, we maybe never have, some, uh, some college end users, facility people, maybe large healthcare systems that don't have the budget to send their people directly to a floor show, but to a show like this that can encompass all the products that they're interested in. Um, so we're getting people in here maybe that we quite would never make contact with at a normal show. A lot of this, you, you register them for the, for the future, perhaps, and even though they maybe don't have a job on their plate right now. Uh, somewhat. Maybe some people that um, you know, have used our stuff in the past, uh, but it's not in front of them on a day-to-day -day basis, so they come in and ask what's new. It may be someone that had, just had a project that was done, but they see something here that might have been a little different. So, yeah, there's some stuff for the future, and then there, but there's some people that are coming in here that said, you know, hey, I've got a project now. Uh, on the flooring side, it's a small part of it, but you know, for us, it's a, it's a, it's a big project. Um, so, in terms of traffic, would you say this is better than last time around? Or is it just, it's hard, it seems like it's really hard to judge that. It's hard to judge. I think um, location where this is at this year, it probably helps with it being in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, obviously, f from a transportation side, it's very easy to get people to come from New York, come, come, come north from Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. You know, the train's very easy, so I think overall the number of people is probably better. Um, it'll be interesting tomorrow and see how we're, if we're able to keep consistent numbers up. I think with the show being on the West Coast last year, I think they had a little bit of a challenge of getting people coming from the East. So I think overall the numbers are up, um, but let's, let's see tomorrow if they're able to maintain it. You're right. There is a concentration of people right here within this area in New York, down to Washington and Baltimore, and I suspect every show is local, I suppose. Uh, I think so, and I think um, this is a very important part of the country. There's a lot of key decision makers, a lot of government, a lot of, uh, a lot of headquarters along the East Coast. And uh, when you start talking about Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, those are three or four large major metropolitan areas that are pretty important. Talk about the story that you're telling here uh, at this show. Well, we're, we're actually kind of taking a little bit different approach, I think, from uh, some of the other manufacturers. A lot of them are telling... Um, more of a, of, of a story with words and about, you know, what they're doing from the lead uh, side of it. We really are still trying to talk about products. Um, we started a, I, way back when, a, you know, going on the environmental side, our, our ownership felt uh, that there was a need for it. Really before there was a lot of, of, of oversight or guidelines that, are, that we now have. So um, we're blessed to have a product line that can make a big impact and not blow somebody's budget. So we're still talking a lot uh, about product and not so much still about, um, you know, programs and stuff. We're tying it all into our, into our products, and um, I think people are appreciate, appreciating that message. Well, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking a lot of people are talking about a lot of things other than product, but people come here basically for product. Yeah, they're still trying to source products. I mean, it, it's a great place for them to come because everything's under one roof, lighting, windows, um, electronics, uh, service, service groups. Um, so they're here to find products and to make their sourcing of products easier for them with everything being on one roof. So they're coming asking questions about projects, about, um, you know, about products that, that they need a solution for. So we found that you know, focusing on that um, and not forgetting the other message of Green Build, but tying it together has been a, very successful for us. Watch word here. At least a lot of people are are saying the word transparency to to me. Now talk about that and what you know. What what, what I I know what transparency is and I know what the concept is. But are we seeing that actually happen? I think you're I think you're starting to. Um, I think what's what's coming down the pike um, is going to require people um, 
to be a little bit more open. Uh, I think what I'm going to make a little inference, but transparency can also mean uh, you know having all your cards on the table and um, you know maybe maybe a, 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 a a fair sense as far as what's what um, what everyone's portraying, and um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, you, you hear a lot of people say greenwash. Um, there's a lot of different interpretations of that, but I think to me, what the transparency is is just getting everyone on the even playing field, uh, having one set of rules or guidelines, and making it easier for the people we we really want to make it easy for the, the end user, the people actually using and buying the products, um, to make their experience a little bit better. Because I think from time to time we hear it's not always an easy product, it, it, a, pro a process. It's not always a um, clean or transparent pr process. So um, and the happier they are, that's usually the more often they're willing to spend some money. So Well, it, it seems like what I'm hearing too, and I'll just bounce that off of you for whatever you think it's worth, that I'm hearing sort of at least some organizations are more selective about what they're transparent about, which means they're not transparent. I suppose. Well, it, it could be coming. I mean, we are we are a privately owned uh, company. There are not a whole lot of people uh, in our industry, so there are some things that you always would like to protect. You, you feel like you have some proprietary, whether it be formulas or products or processes. Um, but some, keep, keeping that um, under lock and key is probably, that day is, that day is probably over. Um, but th there, there's ways to be transparent or be upfront with a customer and still protect your intellectual properties and um, what, what makes you unique. Um, but there's a lot of different interpretations on how you do that. And, that. and that's where I think we're heading towards a single, a single goal or a single guideline that puts everyone, I, I, I call it leveling the playing field. And getting everybody on that level playing field is probably an uphill battle, I suspect. It's an uphill battle. Uh, a lot of people in this room uh, are either uh, walking up the hill or digging, digging the dirt on top of the hill to make it a little higher. But um, but uh, I think I think the the walk go up the hill is about done. I think they're they're very close.